Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with a coronavirus update. Haven't done one in like a week. I'm sorry. I have been incredibly busy. Um, it's just been busy in our clinic, busy in the hospital, uh, busy all around. And I apologize. More updates to come later in the week. A um, couple things to talk about uh, this week. And I think the first thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on is this idea of COVID fatigue. And then we're going to talk about a couple interesting studies, one uh, an, an interesting uh, treatment update and a very interesting study about inhaled steroids. Um, for those of you new to the, for the broadcast or whatever, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine and a functional medicine doctor outside of Charlotte. I work in the emergency department, run a clinic uh, as well, and been doing updates since the very beginning. Um, we do a quick rundown of the numbers usually. Worldwide, 29 million cases, 930,000 deaths. Here in the US, 6.6 .6 million cases, 198,000 deaths. Almost 200 people have died of COVID since this all began back in you know February, basically. Um, to start with a couple of interesting little things. One is a, a, a report out of the University of Pittsburgh. They have developed an antibody um, that deactivates the coronavirus that causes COVID, which is very interesting. And it, they, they've got some interesting models where they've done some therapies in mice and it's shown positive, both protective and preventative um, benefits so, and also treatment benefits for, for people that have active infections. So the idea is that you might be able to give this if you get exposed and avoid getting infected all together, but also it may have a therapeutic effect. If you develop the virus, you can use it as a treatment. There's a drug they, they've developed called AB8, or I'm sorry, yeah, AB8 is the name of the drug, and they're gonna do human trials at some point. It's, it's you know preliminary, it's only being done in animal models, but interesting thought. Um, another interesting report out of uh, Massachusetts General, I believe, which um, is right up the street from where I trained in emergency medicine in Boston. And they used Google data and they were able to correlate web searches for GI symptoms like diarrhea and abdominal pain and loss of taste and smell. It turns out that there were a number of, of cases where those searches spiked three, four weeks before there was an outbreak, you know, a fairly significant outbreak. And um, it's interesting, right? Because, you know, we know there's a little bit of delay between sort of a few people getting the, getting the, the virus, especially early on, and then giving it to others and it sort of escalates. And so it's this idea that maybe you can use search data to predict where hotspots may occur. And I thought that was interesting. The last thing I, I wanna talk about in terms of studies is a really interesting uh, study that came out of the um, National Institute of Health at uh, in London. There's a thing called the Open Safely uh, Project there. And I, I believe what they do is they have this way of aggregating the data from the National Health Service um, in, in England. And anyway, they got data on inhaled steroid use on almost a million patients, 966,000 patients that had asthma and emphysema, COPD, and basically what they found was that use of those inhaled steroids did not reduce mortality from COVID-19. It's a, actually a very powerfully done, well-written, well-designed study. And if you remember, I can't remember the guy's name, but the doctor in Texas that said that, you know, uh, Palmacourt inhaled was the magic bullet for, for uh, COVID. And that was his study of one, you know, of 12 people. Well, here's a study of almost a million that shows that he's probably not correct. And I think that's a useful uh, study. Last thing I want to talk about is a little bit of this idea of COVID fatigue, which I think we're all experiencing. You know, I've been going through this for a while now and we're sick of it. We're sick of the masks. We're sick of social distancing. We're sick of not going, you know, out and doing the things that we want to do. And so the natural thing is to start sort of subconsciously rebelling against it. And, and we went out to dinner in Charlotte over the weekend and boy, I mean, their bars were packed, there, there were restaurants that were packed and, you know, a, people wearing masks to go into places, but really taking them off once they got in there. And, you know, our numbers are dropping. And so I understand the, the kind of sensation that, oh, you know, it's over with or it's nearly over with. I think we're at 5% positivity in North Carolina from 10% not too long ago. So we're moving in the right direction. But I can tell you that, you know, the hospitals are full, um, not only our hospital, but other hospitals as well. Um, we just had an uh, update from the emergency, to, you know, the emergency group today, kind of saying, you know, sort of, we have a monthly meeting and it talks about what's going on. And you know, one of the things that was very clear was that the hospital is full of COVID patients. 
The ICU is full of COVID patients and other hospitals within our system are experiencing the same thing. And this is a time of year when things are supposed to be pretty mellow and the hospitals are fairly empty. Um, and you know we keep worrying about the fall because the fall, weather gets cold, people start coming back inside and they're in closer proximity. A lot of viral things kind of pop off in the fall and a lot of chronic illnesses worsen in the fall. And so fall and winter is the busy time in the hospital. And if the hospital is full today, what's gonna happen three months from now when we've got all these other things going on? And you know, there's this concern of the second wave and this is sort of how these things happen. And so just you know, be careful. Don't back off on the precautions you're taking to protect yourselves and protect others because if we all start doing that, we're gonna probably go in the opposite direction. That's not what we wanna do. So things are looking positive in terms of numbers nationwide, numbers locally, but you know, in large part, that's because we've been doing these things. And if we don't do those things, then we could be faced with what happened when those states opened up early um, at the beginning of the summer. We had these huge spikes in Arizona and Florida and everything else. And a lot of people died as a result of it. I'm gonna stop there. I will be back with more stuff this week. As usual, wash your hands, wear a mask, look after yourselves, look after your family, look out for each other. Goodness gracious, everybody, we just got, you know, it's a tough time of, of 2020 is tough, tough, tough time to be around. And there's a lot of, of, of discontent out there and a lot of other things. So look out for each other, you know, do to others what you'd want them to do to you. As usual, if you like me, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, subscribe, uh, follow us in, in, on Facebook, and we'll be back soon. Have a great night. See ya.